Hey guys, after my video about front cord footwork, many of you asked for a similar one about the rear cord. And here it is. In this video, I want to cover different techniques, always depending on how much time and how much pressure you have and what is the right technique to choose to get to the forehand and backhand rear cord. Okay, so let's start out with the technique and that you have to use when you have the most pressure, when your opponent played a really flat lift, really pushed you deep down into the corner. And not only in the front court, also in the back court, it is super important that we also use lunges in those situations. But I don't want to focus too much on the lunge itself, but I think the more interesting part about the rear court footwork here is the approach to the corner. So on the forehand side, we always want to start with a cross behind, so split step, cross behind, and then going down into a lunge where the foot is pointing into the direction of the corner. On the backhand side, it is a little bit different. There, we want to start with a chassis step, sometimes also cross behind, a little bit depending on how big you are, but chassis step and then turn around and then hitting the backhand shot. This approach step here, I would call it, is super important to adjust the distance that you have to cover to get to the rear court. So many players, especially on the backhand, they are just doing a split, turn and lunge. And many times that is not enough to get all the way into the corner. So things will happen that they totally fall down and they will not be able to recover from the lunge. So try always to add in those approach steps on the forehand and on the backhand side. And you can just adjust the length, always depending on where the shot is coming. So technique number two, uh, I would call an interception step. So still we do not have enough time to jump. There's still a quite flat lift, but we can hit it a little bit higher. And as the name say, this is a technique perfect to intercept those flat shots without hitting it behind, but more beside the body. The technique looks like this. We always do a split step, then do a cross behind, and then a step into the corner. Try to focus also on my foot that lands in the corner. This time it's not turned, but it points more forward, so into the direction of the net or the opponent, and it helps me to push out of the corner a lot faster, and I'm also not going down as deep into the corner. So on the backhand it looks like this, on the forehand like this. I think this technique is overseen, and a lot of athletes, when there is a flat lift, they always turn and go into a lunge. But this is way more dangerous. You can score a lot of points or create a lot of pressure when you're able to intercept the shuttle right when it passes you, and you can increase the tempo of the rally when you're ready with the legs. But also very important, be ready with the racket. This is maybe the most important key, that you get your racket right out when you're doing a split step. So and that will give you the chance to intercept a lot of these flat lifts. Okay, next level, we go a little bit higher. Now we can actually jump. Still not a high lift, so we do not have so much time, but we can jump a little bit up to the shuttle. And the next technique is the China jump or block jump. This is a jump where you do not rotate your body because this takes too much time in those situations, but you just jump flat out. And you see the feet are landing in the same position like you jump off. On the forehand side, this is the go-to technique for most players in most situations when you hit beside the body. And in many situations, it also makes sense to use it here. But I do not see many players using it actually on the backhand side. It is also a bit more challenging and a bit more demanding for the legs. But try to practice that because it can also bring you some huge advantages if you're able to intercept the shuttle from the round the head corner with these block jumps here.
So number four, we have even more time now and now we want to do a scissor jump. This is the go-to technique on the round the head corner when the shot is a little bit higher there, almost all advanced and good players are doing a scissor jump. It will give you way more power because now you can use the rotation of your body as well. But like a little bit the same story of the block jump, but the other way around. On the forehand side, I think this is totally overseen by many players that you can also do a scissor jump here. The secret is you have to get into the trajectory of the shuttle first because from a sideway movement, it is very tricky and also gets you out of position if you do a scissor jump now. But if you first get a little bit under the shuttle and then straight back like you see kind of an L shape when you're moving backwards that will give you a good opportunity also to hit with body rotation with a scissor jump on the forehand side and this is a super powerful weapon that you also see pro players use way more often than beginners or intermediate players. So last but not least, two more options when you have a lot of time and no pressure at all in the rear court. And this is the jump smash or the stepping into the shuttle. First of all, the jump smash is probably what you've seen on most pictures of badminton players. It's when you jump up with both legs and you want to try to um, hit a very steep and powerful smash, try to score a winner. This is the go-to technique, especially in men's singles and men's doubles. A lot of players are using it. A jump smash has two disadvantages in my eyes. On one hand, it uses a lot of power, so it is very exhausting to do many jump smashes. And on the other hand, you also hit at the highest point. And when your opponent gets the shuttle back, you will most likely get in trouble because it takes some time to land. And when you're landing, you have to really rush forward to have a chance to reach the next one. So this problem can be solved by just stepping into the shuttle. So you're not leaving the ground or you're not jumping up, but you're stepping more forward. This will not give you that good angle and you will most likely not uh, score that many winners with that technique, but you still can hit very powerful and you can follow up very quickly and will be very high at the next shot. So many times this is also a good option, avoiding to jump from those situations and more stepping into it or making a flat scissor jump. Last but not least, a quick guide for the recovery after shots. That is also super important that you get into a good position after your shots from the rear court. And I want to present you four different options that are very common or that you should use in most situations. Okay, so first of all, when you hit a clear, you want to go back to the center of the court. And there, when you hit a very high clear, option number one is just going back to the middle, very relaxed with normal um, running steps or walking back to the middle when you play really high. When you hit the clear a little bit more flat and put a little bit more speed in it, then I would uh, suggest to stay low and do two chassis steps to get back to the center. That will make it a lot easier for you to be there in time and to be ready for the next uh, split step, for the next starting movement when your opponent hits the shot. Then when you hit a drop, you have less time. You do not have time for two steps going back to the middle, but only one. And there most of the times also use a chassis step. You will not be able to reach the center. You will just get one step into the direction of the center and then be ready to make an explosive split step to start again. Last but not least, after hitting a smash, most of the times you just want to follow up and follow your smash. Like when you hit cross, just running steps cross court. When you hit straight, running steps straight. So most of the times your opponent will just play a short defense, so you want to follow up your smash. There's no real time to get back to the center or anything like that. So these four variations, very important. Also try to practice them when you're doing footwork. Um, don't always do the same thing. Don't always go back to the middle with the same patterns. Try to think about what shot are you actually hitting or want to hit, and then also use the recovery accordingly. I'm thrilled to announce that there are two new ways now to support me and my channel if you want to help me to create uh, more of these high quality videos about technique, tactics and so on. And on one hand I created a Patreon channel where you can subscribe monthly and uh, choose how much you want to donate. You also get different advantages if you are a Patreon. And on the other hand you can also become a YouTube member of my channel. Pretty much the same. You can choose between different steps and also different advantages you get by subscribing. You find all the details also in the description below. And as usual, you can also support me by just hitting the subscribe button and of course liking this video. I hope I can welcome you for the next one. Bye bye.